So this is an update on the Jaguar F-Pace that I didn't really want to make. That toy tells a story. It's broken down again. My wife was driving it. She said she heard like a pop sound and then uh, it just slowly cut out. Um, I've removed the starter motor and um, I've, I've moved the flywheel and basically the engine's locked but I can move it backwards and it feels fine when it goes backwards. Um, so my feeling is it probably slipped slipped the chain or broken the chain or a tensioner on the chain and uh it's uh bent some valves so i'm stripping it down now for an inspection so i've got the, the upper chain cover off and that all looks fine but i can't get a camera down to see the bottom chain so i'm gonna have to take the gearbox off to do that um, so I'm starting with that. I'll take the gearbox off, take the back cover off, um, and then see see what we got. Maybe I'll have to take the cylinder head off. Um, but if it's bad, I'm just going to be stripping it for parts. I'm sick of all the trouble. It's it's broken down. It's been, it's been on a load of three times now in a year. Um, once for that broken sprocket I had last time there which I got away with really um, just needed to replace the sprocket no valve damage um, and then it broke down it had the uh, stuck in park which was the gear selector issue um, combined with maybe a battery problem um, so yeah it was that and now there's this and I need a reliable car I can't be putting up with this crap all the time so that's the plan, strip it down and see what's gone wrong. So I've got the gearbox off, but I can't get the torque converter off because I can't get access to the bolts because the engine won't turn. So I'm going to have to strip the whole thing apart now. Uh, I don't know if I pull the engine out in one go or just take the head off with the block still in the car. Pain in the ass. So I've taken the uh, cam carrier and cams out. No signs of obvious damage yet. All the rockers are looking all right. And there's no obvious valves that are sitting different to any of the others. But I'm sure I've got a bent valve, so I'm going to uh, take the manifolds off and then get the cylinder head off. So I just removed the inlet manifold and we got a load of metal shavings in it. So, uh, first cylinder's the worst. So I need to work out where this has come from. Um, the turbo looks alright. Let's see it there. Doesn't look like that's uh, blown. So I've got to work out where all this metal's come from. So i just got the cylinder head off. I wasn't expecting to find that. I'm not sure how this has happened. You see, it looks like the liner's dropped. I don't know. And that's the piston with all of the bits taken out. So clearly the top ring has caught that liner and has ripped the crown off the piston. So these are aftermarket liners in this block, I think. Um, I've got a an invoice from when I bought it. The previous owner took it to a machine shop, and they they basically it had damage on a few of the bores, and they had um, they had, um, it fitted line I think a liner to two of them or three of them, and then they like bored them all out, and then it, these pistons are larger than the original ones. So none of this is. JLR spec because they won't sell you over size pistons. So I think it's just uh, not been done well enough. So there we go. Right, so I've bought a new engine. This is out of a 2019 F Pace. Apparently it's 30,000 miles. I was given the reg and a video of it running. Uh, all checked out alright. Came with the uh, gearbox 
Um, I think it looks a little bit different to mine, I'm not sure yet. So I'm going to just keep my gearbox on it. I hope all the engine stuff's exactly the same that looks here. Uh, so the plan is to get this engine in. It's been an absolute nightmare to get it into the garage though. Because I've got a slope out there. And I had two engines down by here which I couldn't get it past. So one of them's there. Cayenne Turbo V8. Big monster of an engine. That's the old one in bits. Yeah, Punto engine. So they're all up. gonna have to stay exactly where they are until I can put this one inside the Jag. To even get the engine as far as we did, I had to put the car on skates because the handbrake wouldn't release because there's no modules connected up. Like all the engine and gearbox are unplugged and it just wouldn't release the handbrake. And then the skate broke, one of the wheels came off, that absolute crap. So now I'm gonna have to struggle of getting the car back across. Um, it's all fun and games, but at least to see, and I couldn't have got it in on my own. To, to even get it up into the drive, I got this winch, which is down in there. And so we lifted it up with the engine hoist and winched it in. So, fingers crossed this is all worth it. Oh, um, I paid three grand for the engine, which is, uh, a really good price considering what they look like they go for on eBay um, and it came with a gearbox so I can sell that and get some money back so I'll get it in I've had a proper look at this engine and I've been tucked up a little bit I think so the sellers were dodgy They're based in Birmingham uh, they were reluctant to give me bank transfer details and when they did it was in somebody else's name but the engine was already on the the back of the low loader then so I felt like you know not much risk um, and I'd been sent photos but I was in work we didn't have a proper look at them but I've had a look at this engine now and the reason that gearbox looks different it's out of a Jaguar XC it's a 2015 Jaguar XC engine um, They've said it's the 180 brake horsepower version, but they've lied about everything because they showed me a video of an engine running. It was out of a silver F pace, and obviously this hasn't come out of that. Um, I asked for the reg of the car, and I found that registration number on an advert on Auto Trader. So they've just made that up. Uh, the driver who went to collect it said they were uh, proper dodgy. Uh, they, it was in a storage yard and they got him to park one end and then they came like from miles away on a forklift bringing the engine round so he could tell that they didn't want him to see where they, where they were keeping stuff. So, I mean, possibly stolen cars, I don't know. Um, I rang the police to see if uh, I could give them the engine number and they could check it. They said they can't, so it's useless, so I'll just go with it. Um, I hope it runs, uh, but it's not the 30,000 mile engine I've I've been sold. Um, so they've, they've tucked me up there, really. I'll probably put it in, hope it sounds all right, and just get rid of the car now. I'm absolutely sick of all this crap. Just one thing after the other. Um, yeah, pissed off. So, taking my engine apart. Oh, the other thing is, this engine doesn't have a diff on the side and a drive shaft hole for the sump. So I've got to put my sump on this engine. Um, so it needs stripping down if I can fit it anyway. But... That's all full of crap in there. This, this is the, the damage. So that's the uh, the line that's dropped. You can see it's hit the comrade there. Um, I was looking through the invoice of this and the engine had had one liner fitted and um, then they were all bored out. Now you can see that that one and that one are the original liners and then that one's got a lip where the others don't 
So that one will be the one they fitted. So that is the original liner. So I don't know how that's failed. I thought it was probably a tolerance thing. But now I'm wondering if uh, something's caused the piston to be tight in the ball and pull it down. I'm not sure. Um, it's all speculation really. It's starting to know what's what. Uh, the oil pump took a whack as well. Um, so yeah, it's carnage really. So, just try and <sighs> cobble something together, get it in the hole, and uh, get rid of the bloody car. So it's a shame, really like the car, but I don't know, it's just, I can't be dealing with this all the time. Just having a better look at this old block, I, I thought that was the replacement line there, because you got the lip there at the bottom that's different from that just realized it's rotated round so I'm just stripping down this new engine got the uh, sump off it's interesting that's the uh, chain for the oil pump it's got a tensioner on it on my engine it didn't have a tensioner just uh, the two sprockets and the chain so they've obviously made some differences so I've got the chains exposed at the back um, definitely not low mileage, it's all a bit filthy, um, but they do say Jaguar on them, so I'll probably guess that these are the original chains, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing um, with regards to this engine, it's an early one, so maybe it hasn't done a lot of mileage because they didn't really last very well. There's problems with uh, the design, I think, of the tensioner, maybe. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. I'm going to change them. I'm going to use the, the chains off the old engine. They've only done, like, a 1,000 miles. 2,000, something like that. Not, like, not a lot. So I'm just going to swap them over, put the um, four-wheel drive sump on it, and uh, get the, the um wiring loom back on it because it's a different wiring loom I realized the plug was different for the gearbox so I'm glad I spotted that now and not when it was all in the car um, so I hope that's the only difference and everything else is as it should be because I'll be pissed off if I end up having to take things apart and swap out sensors and solenoids and stuff if they don't all work with my ECU so fingers crossed it's straightforward now. So the engine's ready to go back in now. So got the wheels off the Jaguar. It's dropped all the way down onto the wishbones. It's as low as it'll go. Uh, so hopefully I can just swing it over the wing. I've done it before a couple of times. It's really, really close. Um, but it saves taking the whole front end off. Plus I can't roll it out of the garage with the handbrake stuck on anyway, so... This is the way I'm going to do it. Right, so got the engine all back in. Everything's connected up. I've recoded it for the new injectors. Got no fault codes on it. So now it's time for the first start. It's probably going to sound awful because it's in the garage. So even if it's a decent engine, it's not going to sound great, I suppose. But fingers crossed. It's not bad at all, that's way quieter than it's ever been on the old engine. So that's not bad, um, pleased with how that sounds. Um, I'm going to have to run it up to temperature now. I need to um, do the uh, gearbox, fill the oil up on that. So you've got to get it at a certain temperature and then uh, you check the level then. You've got to go through a sequence where you run it through the gears. And I also need to fill the diff up 
and then I'll take it for a test drive. But first impressions, uh, I've got a good engine there. So I wasn't sure with the guys I bought it off. They were well dodgy. So that looks like a result so far. So this is how it sounds. I still think it's quite loud, to be honest. Um, but I guess this is how they are. Definitely an improvement on the old old engine. So I'll take that. I don't know whether I keep it now or just get rid of it. Um, I can't be asked with breakdowns. So I mean, I don't know. I'm gonna have to have a think, talk to the wife, see what she wants to do. Um, like the car, but I don't know. All right, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully there's no more updates on this thing.